Hey guys, welcome back to the arena. And we're here for another standard event. So super excited. Um, this one here is a um, nod to one of my viewers who requested a Boros Humans deck. So really excited to jump into this. First of all, if you're new to my channel, thank you so much for stopping by. And if you do end up liking my content, please consider subscribing and maybe sharing it with a friend of yours who might also like it. For my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for coming back. You guys are the lifeblood of the channel. I couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much. The deck list will be in the description, both at moxfield.com and untapped.gg. And then I'll also have a list of different um, playlists of mine, both for my Road to Rank 1 with a mix of Mono White Humans and um, Mono Red Aggro, my standard events videos, which cover a bunch of different decks, and then also my uh, first OT. Uh, OTJ draft, and then um, a list of uh, some collab drafts I've done with Ace MTG. So if you want to check those out, they'll be in the description. And then I do want to give a shout out here again to my first uh, member here of the channel, um, Kibo. So thank you so much again. And with becoming a member, you do get early access to my videos. You also get a shout out here in my videos at the two different levels. And then in addition, I'm hoping to add some new perks here coming up. Um, but just want to thank you guys. This is a really great way if you want to support me and my channel. It's a nice way to give back. Um, and here is how you do it. If you would like to become a member and help support my channel, you can do so. Just click on the join button right next to where it says subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Um, or if you would like to just support my channel just on a one-time basis, you can also click the super thanks button uh, here right on the, uh, also right under the banner here for the video. So these are both great ways to support the channel. I really appreciate you guys and I couldn't do this without you. So thank you guys so much again for your consideration. All right, let's get into some games. Okay, so let's jump into the deck. So, Boros Humans. I love Boros Humans, and I haven't looked at it here in a while since the new set came in, but I think there's a lot of great options here, and I really appreciate uh, my viewers reaching out to me and uh, prompting me to look at this deck because I think it's going to be great. So the major addition here to Boros Humans is we get four copies of Inspiring Vantage, which makes the mana so much better. This is such a godsend for the deck. So... In addition to the four copies of Cavernous Souls, now we don't need to run the Secluded Courtyard and we can run Inspiring Vantage instead. This helps us kind of get a lot more aggressive with some spells, which is kind of a nice change to the deck. So when I was looking at it, I wanted to include enough lifelink. So we've got four copies of Lunark Veteran, three copies of um, Intrepid Adversary here, and then I also was able to add in a full play set of Lightning Helix, which I'm super excited about. Before, the mana just didn't really support this, and now I think we can get away with it. In addition, we also have two copies of Anim Pakal to really kind of go big. We have, the I think, the mandatory four copies of Brutal Cathar, and then three Imidane's Recruiters to really kind of take it to the next level, add haste to the deck. Um, three copies of Night Errant of Eos. Usually I like to have a full play set, but because our three drop slot is kind of uh, scrunched up a little bit here. We want to make sure we have access to Imidanes also. I ended up shaving a Knight Errant. So we'll see how it goes. In the two drop slot, we've also got four copies of Copper Coat Vanguard just to pump everything in the deck. And then one copy of Inti Seneschal of the Sun. So another way to kind of get a way to go tall kind of with this deck. So super excited about that. Uh, we do have one copy of Skrull Defector, Defector Might. This is a nice way to kind of help protect some of our Brutal Cathars. And then we have, I think the extra one drop I made was Recruitment Officer, just because it plays well with Brutal Cathar, giving us something to do while we're waiting for them to flip. In addition, I'm super excited because this deck with the better mana can now support a full playset of Monstrous Rage and a full playset of Kumano Faces Kakazan. This is something that I think someone tried kind of a while back. It just didn't really kind of get a lot of traction. But I think the stage is set now for Kumano Faces Kakazan to finally come together with Boros. So let's go ahead and jump in here. I think the land count I've got at 22 land, which 
This deck does get a little expensive and it also has a lot to do with extra mana. You've got Recruiter at five to make some Knight tokens and then you've got Adversary to kind of go big. Um, you have, I guess, the Lone Recruitment Officer. So you have some stuff to do. We've got a couple Mirixes here to help kind of fix things. And then, yeah, the rest of the lands here, we've got three copies of Sokenzin for extra tokens and three copies of Iganjo for extra tricks. So let's jump in. I hope everybody's had a great day so far. And I've just been, yeah, really having a lot of fun with the new set, trying out a lot of different decks, and also jumping into Limited again, which has been so much fun. Another deck that I've kind of got planned here in the future is another look at the Orzhov Life Gain deck with Amalia and the other sort of cast of characters there. So that should be coming up. Um, and then I'm hoping to get some more drafts in. I know I've got, I think there was a collab draft with Ace MTG. Hopefully that'll get recorded here sometime soon. And uh, yeah, just really excited. Okay, opening hand looks great. We've got access to all of our mana. Um, no white for a lightning helix yet, but hopefully we'll be able to draw a couple here. We don't have any one drops, but I think this is a good enough hand to keep. Okay, Inspiring Vantage is nice, giving us access there to Lightning Helix if we need it. And looks like we are up against Boros Convoke. I think the Lightning Helix is gonna go a long way in this matchup. So hopefully this works out well. Um, do we want to hold up Helix for any reason? I mean, I guess they could go Imidane's next turn, but I think they're more likely to just try to go for the Knight Errant play. So I think let's just drop Copper Coat here since Adversary doesn't block very well. Plus we've got the mana to make adversary sort of do something. Okay, we're not quite on Knight Errant mana yet. And I don't want to go Recruiter can try to go for five. I think we want to just maybe, I guess we could use this as like a Lightning Helix turn. The other option here is just playing out the Adversary without pumping. It's another option. Yeah, kind of at a loss here. I think, hmm. I guess maybe holding Helix here is okay. Although we might not have another chance to get this adversary down. It will be better later though, for sure. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna hold Helix this turn actually. Potentially it might be the safe play to get the adversary down in case they've got some piece of removal. They don't run a lot of removal. So I don't know if this is right. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, we might not have time to do the full pump on adversary. So I think actually we need to go adversary here. Okay, so they've got Recruiter. Interesting, not attacking with everything there. What 
are they pushing? I guess they wanna they wanna give us like a free attack back. I do get that. Okay, so three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. We dropped to five. I think what we could do is we could like lightning helix their two one and then get another four in so we'd get seven of that back. So we'd basically be dropping to 12 essentially um, and then leave like copper coat back, but then we don't get to play knight errant next turn. Hmm. Yeah, not really sure what I wanna do. I think maybe knight errant is a bit more important. So let's just block there. So we've got another Imidane, it's gonna be rough. But yeah, I think we definitely wanna go for a Knight Errant here. Animpa Call is another option. I guess the thing is if we go for a Knight Errant, we can try to find like some Lunark veterans and that could be pretty good. Um, Animpa Call does block decently well. I'm going to go for the Knight Errant play. Yeah. Again, hopefully no second Imidans here. I guess if they have like the enchantment, we don't just die. We drop to two. If they have war leaders call. Uh, okay, so they had another Imidans. Not a lot we can do about that, unfortunately. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, we're dead. So I suppose the other option is we could have tried blocking um, with both the uh, both of our creatures the turn that they did the first all in, save a little bit of damage, and then held up like lightning helix perhaps. Yeah, there are a couple different ways we could go there. But sometimes if they've got like two Imidans, they've just, if they've got it, they've got it. All right, opening hand looks great. We've got a one drop this time. Love Inspiring Vantage. Just so happy with this card. And it's funny how like just one minor change to the mana base can make a deck so much better. Um, it is notable that like the build that I went with here, there were a lot of cards that I considered that you could also run like um, Angel Fire, whatever it's called, the three mana thing with flashback that pumps and gives life link and indestructible and vigilance. That's another, you know, another card you could consider. I think I would definitely have it in the board if I was doing like best of three. Um, I wasn't sure what to shave in the top end to, to make room for it. And I think you do want to have enough creatures to kind of have everything work with Imidanes and uh, the Knight Errant. But that is certainly a consideration, maybe like a Singleton or something like that. Um, Bruised Harl was another card that I considered from the new set. I think it was just a little bit too expensive, but I could see it doing some work as maybe like a one or two of. 
here we're going to start with Kumano faces Kakazan. And it's so cool to be able to do that in a Boros deck. Um, yeah, there were just a lot of really good options. But, you know, cutting Thalia out of this list was something that decided to do just in favor of getting Lightning Helix going and, you know, a couple other spells. You could certainly run it with, like, a Thalia version instead, though, if you wanted. All right, let's... What are we up against? Rugged Highlands? Um, could go Vanguard here, could go Adversary. I think I'm just going to go for the Adversary. Since we're pretty low on mana. Question is, do we slow them down now or do we just like push for more? I feel like we just blow this out of the way. Oh, never mind. We don't have the mana for Helix. So, yeah, we've got to go for Vanguard here. Even though our mana is better, it's certainly not perfect. I think we have like 14 sources of each color or something close to that. I wonder if they have like burned down the house or something on five. Hopefully not. I think if we get to untap, there's a pretty decent chance we win. Okay, still no extra land, but we can push for a lot here. surprise interesting deck all right one and one <clears throat> yeah the cool thing about the standard events is you do end up seeing a bunch of decks that you just don't see in like top mythic ladder so you do see a little bit more of a variety All right, opening hand looks great. Got a nice one, two, three. And just, I can't say enough good stuff about Inspiring Vantage. Love this card. Very happy to see this Lunaric Veteran here in our opener up against Mono Red. I will say that Mono Red, especially after exploring it in my standard event, where it did really, really, really well, um, is just like a terrifying deck now that it has Slick Shot show off. That card is just busted. Mono Red was already a really top tier deck, but it's even better now. And there's so many different ways to build around it. I've, I've explored like um, the Jund, like Pump All In version, the Mono Red version. There's like, you know, a Burn version, like a, a Boros version that has like Life Link and stuff, and almost like endless possibilities.
DK. They've got the Ruckus coming. But yeah, hoping to never block with our Lunark Veteran, especially with Kumano out. There is the slick shot show off. Well, I was thinking about getting Swift Spear, but uh, yeah, so much for that. So I don't think we trade. I guess, yeah, I think we need to race. So we take seven here and then probably go for the show off. It's close. I don't think we have time for Night Errant here. Like, the show-off is so dangerous, we have to respect it, I think. I really do want to take this. I think we have to take Swift Spear, though. I mean, ugh, it's close. I might regret this, but I think we're taking Swift Spear. Oh, you know what? I forgot we give him an extra card. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe taking the show off would have been better there. Um, hopefully they can't kill us next turn. It's going to be... <laughs> I know what this deck is capable of, so there's a, there's a re very real chance they could just kill us. I will say, you know, this deck definitely, if it's not running Thalia, has a much harder time against Mono Red. We're also not running Adeline, so that is another another card that I certainly do miss in this matchup. But I don't. <laughs> oh man, Thalia is great though. Or uh, Lightning Helix is such a nice draw here. Absolutely needed it. Trying to think like what they could have. I think the only card that they're running at instant speed is gonna be Monstrous Rage. So we could hold off Lightning Helixing right now um, and just push. Maybe try to get them to commit some spells and then get them with the Lightning Helix. Make them believe it's safe. That'll work. Helix was very, very timely there. Two and one.
All right, opening hand looks interesting. Uh, we definitely have access to double helix, which is nice. Uh, we don't have a super fast hand though. I'd like to pick up a two drop if at all possible, but it may not be meant to be. Okay, that is definitely something I'm happy to helix. Nice. Okay, so now we can get Animpa Call online. And then if they Brutal Cathar it, we can Brutal Cathar their Brutal Cathar. It's almost like I knew what they were going to do. Okay, now I just want to Helix it. They don't have any kind of like nonsense to protect. I suppose if they're like mono white aggro, they could use the um, the other the werewolf thing, were fox. But it looks like mono white humans. I guess you never really know. I think I'm just gonna wait until their end of turn. Yeah, that's not happening. Very nice draw. Okay, now we could just see if they can go for the block and then we can get their Thalia, which feels pretty good. Monstrous Rage. This is a better use of our mana, but I think, again, the person with the last Brutal Cathar wins the fight. So I'm just going to attack with Anim Bacall and see what they do. Suppose they could double block here. But even if they do, I think we can go to four, right? Yeah. Okay, so now I guess we'll just let that happen. And I suppose I will Brutal Cathar here since we get the benefit of the Kumano. They could have a second Brutal Cathar, definitely a possibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh well. Um, let's just go for a night errant here. Just find some more gas. We could certainly attack in and like try to get them to do something, but I think they're just not going to block. Swing and a whiff. Those are good ones. Those are definitely good ones. Okay. So we probably want to rage this turn. Um, guess we hold back with our brutal catharsis. We don't want to trade this to, for them to get their Thalia back.
yeah, that was kind of, I'm not sure if that was worth it, but it is nice to kind of get them to have a slightly smaller team now. Maybe we should have just attacked with a Knight Errant. This is definitely a tough match. I think we need we need more removal. <laughs> okay. I think we can use the other monstrous rage here just to get the free kill. Inti is a nice pickup. Do we want to trade Brukathar for adversary? I think we are okay with it, actually. The problem is, is that they could just trade like double veteran. We could just play Inti and not use Recruiter. That's another option. Could also try to trade this for both of their veterans, which I think is fine. Ganjo is really nice. So we could attack with our Brukathar. I guess get rid of the Imidanes to make it a 5 5 and then try to use Iganjo here. Hurts throwing, giving away the Imidanes, but I think maybe it's the move. Problem is though, if we don't cast a spell and our Brew Cathar flips, then they'll be able to double spell next turn and get our Cathar, which sort of sucks. <sighs> Otherwise, we could just attack with a, this as a 4 4 and then still see if they go for it. That might be another move. Yeah, I kind of like that actually. We're at 27 though, so we're not super worried. Do we want our veteran in the air for any reason? I don't think so. 
So the cool thing with channeling is it works with NT, right? Guess we could also attack and then discard this and then try to play two spells and get their Moonrage Brute. Otherwise, we can just make two knights here. Yeah, I think we go for it. I think it's like our one way to kind of get back into this game. Fortunately, did not get the. Uh, we would have needed like a one drop to, to double spell here. Oh my god, they've got another adversary. Oh, this is ridiculous. All right, so we have to double chump to not die. If we double spell, do we have any chance of surviving? Yeah, I think we have to block with a Nimpa call and hope to double spell and then get one of these things back. God, it's rough. One mana short. Oh, man. I guess we can pitch the recruiter and then hope to draw something like a land would be amazing. Man, this is wild. Okay, that actually works. I think we might still be dead here. I, I suppose we can block. Okay, we're still in it. In it to win it. Oh <laughs> god, that thing is a 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, this is so ridiculous. Oh, okay. These are all 8-6, so we have to block there. I think we need a Nimpa call around to try to make more creatures for us to block with later. Go to one. Let's see, how do we do this? So next turn, play, play Brutal Cathar, get one of their two power guys. 
Yeah. Hope to draw something good for one mana. They're at 53. Oh, good lord. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what we could draw here to get out of this. I think we're just dead. Unless they severely biff it somehow. Yep, just activate and swing in. That works. One and two. Or two and two, excuse me. Can we turn this around? I guess it's possible that maybe... Boros Humans still wants to play Adeline instead, because I think Adeline is like overall better than Anim Bacall, Um, just because Anim Bacall is more fragile. Especially against like the mono red decks, you really want to have Adeline instead, just because of the four toughness. It is cool to be able to play Kamano Faces Kakazan, though, that's a lot of fun. You're not the only one with two Kumano faces, Kakazan. Pretty nasty turn. So we're taking nine. Yikes. I think the problem with an Impa call is like it's really great when everything is going well, <laughs> but when things are not going well, it is super rough. So now we've just got a Brook Cathar, their Godric here, just to stay in it. eight already um yeah i think i want to get in with veteran <sighs> can we even afford to get in with veteran i think we might just have to hold here really don't want to lose veteran
So they've got Monstrous Rage plus anything, we're dead. If they have just Monstrous Rage, we might still be dead. Let's see, if we block like this, they've got Monstrous Rage, we're just dead. I think we block like that and then hope they don't have two spells. Because giving them back Godric just doesn't work. If they have Lightning st Strike also. Yeah, there's the Monstrous Rage. Do they have a second spell? Yes. Okay, that's going to do it. Unfortunately, the standard event ends here. We ended up going two and three, so probably need to go back to the drawing board for the build. But overall, it was a fun deck. So thanks, guys, so much for watching. Unfortunately, we, I guess we got a pack, so we got something here. But um, again, I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. We will see you here in the next one. Mm -hmm.